Hello everyone and welcome to our last video in our ProRes RAW workflow video series. In this last video we will be looking at how to work with ProRes RAW in ACES. Now some of you might ask what is ACES and why would I want to work in it? Well, I'm sure some of you know the answers to these questions, uh, but for those who don't, here it is in a nutshell. In a nutshell, ACES is a very big linear color space that you can work in. I specifically say working because it's nothing you can send to a display. It is a pure working color space. So how does this work? Well, at the very beginning, there is what's called an IDT, Input Device Transform, which goes from your native color space that the camera records in, say vGamut and vlog, to ACES. Now, in the case of ProRes RAW, we don't really have to deal with IDTs because we can debire ProRes RAW straight to ACES. So we don't have to load an IDT. But generally, if you have to load one, it basically works the same way an input LUT works. So then you have your footage in ACES color space. However, as I said at the beginning, you can't display ACES just like that. It looks pretty ugly and pretty dark. Um, so what you will need is an ODT, Output Device Transform, that goes from the working space, that is ACES, to whatever your display or projector supports. For instance, Rec. 709 and Gamma 2.4. Now, technically speaking, in between, there's also this little thing called Reference Rendering Transform, or RRT. However, you as user don't have to worry about that. Uh, the RRT is applied by the software of choice, including Scratch, automatically. Now, of course, you don't want to just monitor ACES, you also want to render it out. And the same applies when rendering it out. So you have your ACES timeline, and the first thing that invisibly to the user gets applied is the RRT. And with that applied, you can render out a perfectly fine ACES uh, file in the form of an OpenXR, for instance. We'll get to that later. However, now you can apply different ODTs. So, from your ACES source, you can go to, let's say, Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4 for TV delivery. You can also go, just in parallel, to P3D65 for cinema delivery, or P3D65 in PQ for HDR delivery, and so on. This is possible because the ACES color space is so big that you can perfectly well scale it down to smaller color spaces and have multiple deliverables in different color spaces going out from your ACES source. Okay, so this in a nutshell is the workflow here. Um, and this also means that we have to work with color management in Scratch, which at the beginning of this video series, I deliberately told you to please turn off. So in this last video, we'll turn it on and I'll show you how it works. Now for the question why you would wanna work in ACES is mainly because stuff like camera matching works a lot better in ACES because it's this huge unified color space that you can put all the cameras into. Uh, and also because that color space is so huge, stuff like pulling keys, qualifiers, works much better because the different shades of a color can be differentiated between much better. So there are a couple of reasons for working in ACES, but this tutorial is mainly um, to show you how you can create OpenXR files in ACES color space from your ProRes RAW clips to deliver to other departments for color grading or compositing. So let's take a look at how this works. And we'll start by going to the project settings. Because here in the project settings, there is this ACES drop down here. And as you can see, there's three different flavors of ACES. What do those mean? Well, uh, ACES by itself is a linear color space, as I explained at the beginning. That being said, doing color grading in a linear space doesn't feel particularly nice. So to compensate for that, the Academy has come up with um, ACES flavors, so to speak, that are suited for color grading. So this is ACES CC and ACES CCT. 
I recommend to use Asus CCT because it behaves even slightly better than the Asus CC flavor. What are these flavors? Well, basically they are internal transforms. They are invisible to the user, but the color tools that you use in Scratch or any other application that supports Asus in these modes will feel much more natural. So once we have selected Asus CCT as our Asus version of choice, we can enter the project and import our clips that we already know. Go select folder and I will right away go to media browser, to the note tab and tell all my clips to please be debared to Asus AP0. As you can see the EOTF dropdown is grayed out then, go straight to linear, OK and now go to color fix and take a look. Oops, I can tell our timeline is too small. Let's drop that down here real quick. Okay. And as you can see, this does not really look very pleasing. So we have to enable color management in order to work with ACES. Now our source clip is flagged as ACES because it is being debayered to ACES. However, if we go to the settings and to the monitor menu, we can see that our monitor is set to source, which means no color management. So in this case, I'll set it to Rec 709 Gamma 2.4, which it is. And now Scratch does an automatic transform just for our display here from Asus AP0 to Rec 709 for our interface monitor. And if I would have any SDI output or a dual head monitor connected directly to my graphics card, these would show up in this list as well and I could configure them in a similar way. Now I can use the MON button up here to toggle our display LUT or our display transform on and off. So this is the raw ACES image as is and this is it through our output transform. Okay, so now we have our clips in ACES and if you find yourself in that situation where the colorist asks for transcodes in ACES color space or maybe the compositor, uh, this is the way to do that. This is how you can debayer your ProRes clips to ACES just the way you would with any other color space. The only difference is that if you're working with ACES and you want to monitor your clips correctly, you have to enable color management here for the displays and also for rendering out, which we will get to right away. So I'll go to the render tab. And as you can see in here, um, every output node that I add has its own color space tags down here. And these tags are really only tags that do nothing unless the apply button is enabled. Now, if I would set this to also Rec 709 and enable the apply button, Scratch, when rendering this particular output node, would go back, look at each clip, this one, see, oh, this clip is in ACES and in scene linear. However, my main output node is Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. So when rendering this node, I have to transform from ACES AP0 to Rec 709. And it does this check for each and every clip. So you can even have uh, clips of different color spaces inside a single timeline, they will all be unified to Rec 709 upon rendering this node. In a similar way, since the ACES color space is so big, it is recommended to leave the main output node as ACES, just like that. And now even if the apply button is active, the target color space, ACES, is the same as the source color space. It's also ACES. So there will be no transform whatsoever. However, uh, since ACES is so incredibly big, from this point onwards, we can do uh, multiple output deliveries by adding transformer nodes. So here's the first transformer node, and I'll set that to Rec 709 Gamma 2.4 and enable the apply button. And now, uh, Scratch will look at this node, see that it's ACES, then pipe the image into this node and see that it's Rec 709, and it will do a transform. And if I now add ProRes encoder behind it, I will render Rec 709 ProRes files. Back to our main output node. I can add another transformer node in parallel and set that to, well, uh, let's say, um, Rec 2020. 
again, don't forget to enable the apply button, otherwise these are really just flags. Only with the apply button, they trigger an actual transform. And uh, yeah, behind that, add an image node and render this to, what do we render it to? TIFF, 16-bit integer, okay? And so on. However, for now, we just want to render ACES. So we can stick with our main output node, set it to ACES. And here is the important thing. Uh, when rendering out ACES, you have to render it in a floating point file format, which is OpenXR, which is uh, basically a very, very powerful kind of image sequence. And you can set this to 16 or 32-bit float. You cannot render uh, an ACES image really that well into a ProRes file or an H.264 or something like that. It is possible, you can do that, but it doesn't make a lot of sense because a lot of the information that an OpenXR can hold in floating point will be clipped in a quick time if you render it like that. So here we are now, we have set our main output node to 16-bit float OpenXR, ACES AP0. In the Format Settings tab, we can choose a compression for our AXLs because they will be very, very big otherwise. Uh, let's go with zip compression. And lastly, we just have to set up the export file name. So we will call this ACES EXRs, pick a slash, so Scratch creates a folder. And inside, I want hashtag S name with the source name of the clip. And again, make a slash, so Scratch will create a folder with the source name of the clip. And inside, again, render the source name, underscore, and then the frame count of that clip. However, not just the frame count of the timeline, but the source frame count. Okay, that's it. Hit OK, hit render, and then we will render out our XR files in ACES color space. And that's the way uh, you can work with ProRes RAW and ACES in Scratch. Okay, that's it for our last video on ProRes RAW workflows. I hope this was useful to you. If you have any questions, please feel free to email us at any time under support at assimilateinc.com. All right, have a great day and see you soon. Bye.